Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So I'll click the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Saba, and today we're investigating an application or an extension of Black Scholes model for option pricing when transaction costs are not zero. Black Scholes model is very famous and quite widely applied to price options, and one of the simplifying assumptions it uses is that transaction costs are zero. However, there is a pretty straightforward extension of the model developed by Leland in 1985 that allows for non-zero transaction costs. The assumptions are as follows. We have got a fixed round trip transaction cost as a percentage of traded volume. So let's say we can express it in basis points or as percentages. And we have got the so-called revision interval or the holding period for our option position, which is notated as delta T. And it might not be equal to the maturity of the option. Again, if we're just buying and holding, if our option strategy is uh, speculative and uh, revolves around just guessing what price is going to be at expiry, well, then our revision interval, our holding period is exactly the same as maturity. But if we are doing dynamic hedging, our revision interval might be smaller than that. Again, uh, setting revision interval greater than maturity would not be very meaningful in this regard. Everything else, are exact uh, same inputs as in the conventional Black Shoals. And uh, what Leland has proven is that you can use Black Shoals as is, but revise the volatility calculation by including the term that is dependent on your round trip trading cost, K, and your revision interval or your uh, trading horizon, delta T, in this adjustment. So let's input uh, our model parameters, revise the volatility as per the Leland 1985 procedure, and study how trading costs across various uh, revision intervals affect the values of call and put options. So let's say we have got a strike price of 100 and the underlying price of 100. Let's value the add the money option um, as it's the simplest and the most commonly traded options. Let's say our annualized volatility is 30%. Again, that's unrevised. That can be estimated from historical data, for example, or from other techniques. Let's say the maturity of the option is a month. Again, in all um, models like that, we express maturity in years. So one month would be a 12th of a year. Let's say our risk for rate is 4%. We're typical for these days. And let's say our transaction cost is 1%. Again, it's a round trip. Uh, transaction cost. So if it costs 50 basis points to sell, 50 basis points to buy, we include both 1%. If you have got just a one-way transaction cost for the Leland model application, you just double it. Again, this is something that you need to keep in mind. And let's say that our revision interval would be a week. So let's say 1 over 52, as there are 52 weeks in a year approximately. And now we can perform the revision of our volatility to plug it into the Leland extension of the Black-Scholes model. For that, we need to multiply our starting volatility by the square root of 1 plus the square root of 2 divided by pi times our round trip transaction cost k divided by the initial volatility sigma times the square root of the revision interval delta t. And having closed the appropriate number of parentheses, we can see that due to transaction costs, the effective revised volatility is slightly inflated compared to our 30% initially. Again, quite um, intuitively, we can see that if the transaction cost is actually zero, then this volatility figure is equivalent to the starting value of the volatility, and the Leland model is equivalent to the Black-Scholes model. But let's see what a transaction cost of 1% actually does 
to fair values of our call and put options. And for that, we need to calculate D1 and D2, just as in the conventional black shows, just using the revised volatility of sigma hat in place of sigma. So we input the logarithm of the underlying price minus the logarithm of appropriately discounted uh, strike. So we input the strike price and multiply it by the exponent of negative risk-free rate times maturity of the option in years. That uh, completes the uh, numerator calculations. And then we just divide it by the revised volatility sigma hat times the square root of our option maturity. And we subtract half and we add half times the revised volatility or sigma hat times the square root of maturity. That produces a D1 of 0.0825. For D2, we can simply subtract uh, sigma hat times the square root of maturity from the D1 calculation, just as in the conventional black shows. Or we could copy this formula and convert this plus into a minus. Both ways would work. So let's show you the first way. We copy this formula here, change this plus into a minus, and that generates a D2 figure of minus 0 0.0120. Or alternatively, we could have subtracted sigma hat times the square root of maturity from our D1 figure, and we would have obtained the equivalent result. And now, for the fair values of calls and puts, we need to use D1 and D2 figures, as well as the uh, cumulative distribution function of the standard normal distribution. Again, this extension does not abandon the normality assumption or the constant volatility assumption for that matter that can be uh, more problematic than the zero transaction cost assumption, all things considered. Uh, here, we can multiply the underlying price by the standard normal distribution, norm as dist of D1 and input one for cumulative. And then we subtract the appropriately discounted strike. So we multiply by the exponent of minus risk-free rate times maturity, and we multiply it by the standard normal distribution of D2 cumulative. And that gives us a fair value of a call at around four. Now, for the fair value of the put, just as in standard black shows, we can copy this formula and change pluses into minuses, both in front of the price of strike and in front of D1 and D2. So this minus needs to be changed into a plus, and this plus needs to be changed into a minus. And we get a fair value of the put of 3.6. Now let's perform some comparative statics. Uh, first, see whether the uh, conventional uh, relationships between uh, model parameters and option values hold. So for example, if we increase our strike, uh, just as with conventional option pricing, calls become cheaper and puts become more expensive, given the fact that it's more valuable to sell something at a higher price and less valuable to buy something at a higher price. If the strike price is reduced, the reverse is true, because it's more valuable to have a call with a low strike to be able to buy something for cheap, rather than to be able to sell something for a cheap price. This is quite understandable. Then we can also uh, play around with the volatility figures. If volatility goes down, both fair values of calls and puts go down, as low volatility means lower potential payoff for both of our options, as it's less likely that the underlying price will go deep out of the money or deep in the money. And if volatility goes up, the fair values of both calls and puts increase, as it's more likely now that the underlying price will be deep out of the money or deep in the money uh, at expiry. And the same is true for maturity. If our option is uh, more long-term, for example, two months, it increases the fair value. And if it's more short-term, let's say two weeks, so two over 52, it reduces fair values of calls and puts. And that preserves the um, heuristic that maturity and volatility are ultimately facets of the same concept that um, result in more substantial deviations from the strike price and that would potentially generate a greater payoff in a particular scenario for either holding a put or holding a call option. So back to our initial specification, let's investigate how changes in uh, transaction cost specific parameters affect valuation. If we 
reduce our transaction cost to 0.5%, for example, both calls and puts become less valuable because the effective volatility in this case uh, drops. If transaction cost goes up, fair values are increased quite dramatically, given that effective volatility sigma hat is also increased to a greater degree. And uh, the effect of transaction costs is more potent uh, the more frequent the revision interval is. And that can be observed both mathematically, as uh, square root of delta t here is in the denominator, and both uh, from a financial point of view, as the uh, more frequently you trade, the more trading costs affect your ultimate payoff. So if we revise not a weekly, but daily, one over 365, for example, well, that generates quite a big inflation in our revised volatility, uh, corresponding to increases in fair values of the options. And if we go for a less frequent revision interval, a more long-term holding period, let's say one month, matching our maturity, that's what's appropriate if you are just buying and holding your option strategy, then the impact is less pronounced. Uh, what is also quite useful to observe from this particular model is that it generates quite a, a notable heterogeneities in option values across traders that face different levels of transaction costs and that face different investment horizons. So an option that might be overvalued to a trader that um, has got a long uh, investment horizon, well, it might as well be overvalued for a trader that has a very short investment horizon. And therefore, even if trading costs are the same across all traders, different investment horizons or different revision intervals would lead to um, disagreements about the fair values of those contracts and would trigger quite a bit of trading between investors with short horizons and investors with long horizons. And this is the fundamentals behind introducing transaction costs into Black Shoals option valuation and some comparative statics in terms of how those parameters affect fair values of calls and puts. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos and business finance or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.